Good morning, Ambassador, uh, dear Edda, dear guests. It's a pleasure to see you all in Reykjavik here today. And also you who are watching online, uh, it's great to have you with us. As many, you, as, uh, as many of you know, uh, Carfix is the daughter company of Reykjavik Energy, which is owned by Reykjavik City for the most part. And we're very proud of Carfix. And we follow their journey um, in much the same way as a grandparent would follow their grandchild. We may not really understand what they're doing in every step. <laughs> uh, as the climate technology, let's be honest, it's, uh, it requires su substantial uh, scientific expertise. Uh, and mineralization is uh, a, it's a very specific topic. So we have interesting meetings. Uh, but as grandparents, we know that they're doing good things and we know where they come from. We watched them grow up uh, very fast uh, in the last few years as the world has become aware that it is possible to bind carbon dioxide emissions into stone and keep them there forever. This is, of course, amazing. Uh, a local solution with a global impact. And we should really take a step back and consider how amazing it is that mineralization uh, actually works, that we're able to mimic nature in this way, nothing less than a significant climate solution. Reykjavik Energy has also made an important uh, contribution to a climate-friendly uh, world uh, by providing our city with geothermal energy for house heating and electricity from uh, geothermal sources as well. All houses in Reykjavik are heated with geothermal district heating and 90% of houses in Iceland uh, also. Uh, in 2020, we avoided costs which amounted, uh, amount to more than 4% of our GDP uh, by heating our homes with geothermal rather than oil. This self-reliance or energy independence uh, is also why we did not see a spike in house heating costs due to the Ukraine war. While our geothermal resource is rather abundant, uh, there are definitely opportunities uh, to expand the use of geothermal for house heating across the world, uh, as it requires much lower water temperatures uh, than for electricity production. Our district heating system was put in place in the 70s uh, as a response to the oil uh, crisis and the fluctuating um, oil prices. And today we see increased interest in this simple solution around the world. Uh, apart from the obvious economic benefits, uh, this switch also left us with cleaner skies and better health. With our electricity coming mostly from hydro, hydropower and geothermal energy, I think we're a good example uh, of a city that runs well on uh, renewable energy. Reykjavik was a world leader in geothermal energy 50 years ago. And it is so exciting that Reykjavik is now at the forefront uh, of a major climate breakthrough again uh, when we see mineralization truly take off. We are very well aware, however, that uh, the first step in climate action is preventing emissions. Uh, the city has uh, an ambitious climate agenda and is one of uh, 112 cities uh, taking part in the European project Net Zero Cities, where we lay out a path to reach climate neutrality by 2030. And putting our climate ambitions into action locally focuses on uh, shifting travel behaviors, uh, waste management, and the construction sector. Over 60% of CO2 emissions in Reykjavik come from transport, uh, largely because we already rely on uh, renewables uh, and electricity uh, for house heating. Uh, so reducing private car travel needs uh, will make a huge difference, and we aim to do so with a variety of measures, uh, the largest being a new city line, a bus rapid transit system that will allow for convenient public transport within the city and the surrounding areas. 
And according to our latest travel mode survey, 68% of the working population uh, uses a private car to get to and from work. Uh, when we started measuring in 2008, uh, that figure was at 82%. So we have seen some positive changes, uh, although our goal uh, for green transportation is, uh, is 50%. Uh, and for the trips that still need to be made by car, uh, we will electrify the fleet and ON power. Uh, another daughter company of Reykjavik Energy is an active player in installing charging stations to make this all possible. Icelanders are crazy about new tech. Internet penetration stands at 99% and 82.5% of the population uses social media. And when I say this about the social media, I'm not really sure if this is a good thing. Uh, but okay, we are crazy about tech, uh, and the willingness to adopt new technologies is a factor that enables us to see a surprising amount of innovation within the city. And Carpix is in, in, in the core of itself an innovation company. Uh, so we also actively encourage innovation in a different way uh, in different ways uh, we have specific locations uh, where we aim to attract innovative companies to mix and match uh, carfix was born in such a location in the geothermal park in uh, at Hattel city Reykjavik city is a small city uh, and that has uh, costs and and uh, of course it's better to be big, but it allows us to be uh, dynamic, uh, allows for free movement of ideas between people and, and sectors, and we have a common goal uh, that we can, and we can easily work together uh, and achieve our goals uh, as we know one another and we trust each other. So, dear guests, I think we all know, I mean, you are here, we know what we have to do. I think we all realize that we are one of the last generations that has a chance to do something in order to prevent the catastroph uh, catastrophic climate change. And I can say on behalf of Reykjavik City that we will do what we can. We are taking action. And I can see that uh, from your presence here today and all of you who are watching online, that you are ready for action too. So have a great summit. Thank you.